What's up guys, it is Sonia and today I'm going to be doing a quick video about how you can travel on a budget and travel without breaking the bank. Yeah! I do apologise for this. Didn't get much sleep last night and now I'm just on a whim filming a video so that was logical. And yeah, got a bit of a sore throat and you know, yeah, I'm going to try and do this in one tape because my video software is just my video editing software is being a nightmare and all that all this hairstyle's gone well yeah wow so yeah without any further ado I thought I would just get into it and give you guys some tips assuming as this is supposed to be a travel channel and I haven't really been living up to that so I'm gonna do that right now so the first tip I have is to book flight I look like a bald mole. Oh. Does this look okay? So my first tip is to book flights in advance. I know that a lot of people think that if you book flights last minute, you get a better deal. I'm fine. Um, sometimes you can, um, but at the end of the day, I think it's better just to get that framework of where you're travelling to in early because if you do it last minute you might be stuck with a really high price that you're going to have to take because you're going to have to get there otherwise there's no point booking the holiday you know what I'm saying? so you're going to have to take that high price and you won't have as much of a choice of where you want to sit if you want that option you won't have much of a choice of what time you travel at which might be annoying because you might waste a day and I think generally it's just a better idea to get everything in early and I mean, it, it, being organised is one of the key things, I think, to travelling, so I just think it just makes sense to get everything done and so you don't have to be panicking in that really intense time when you're trying to get your flights and everything before you go. Um, I have some tips on budget airlines. Personally, in the UK, we have EasyJet, lovely orange colours, Ryanair, really bad jingle. Just some heads up for those, those two um, airlines. Um, they will come across as quite competitive on things like Skyscanner, those kind of price comparison sites. They do have added charges for putting bags in the hold, you weren't aware of it. Um, they often, I think they charge about £14 for my trip to Berlin to put things in the hold. So make sure that you, maybe you could share with a friend and kind of split the cost or at the end of the day, if you're going for more than a week, it's best to just take your own case, especially if you're going um, between places that will have a different climate. Personally, we're going to Berlin, I'm going to Berlin, and then um, me and my best friend are going to fly to Munich where it's a little bit warmer. So we just thought it's better to take your own case and have more things rather than not have enough, especially when you don't want to be paying for laundry. And well, I'm sitting on something. Sorry about that. <laughs> you don't want to be paying for like, laundry and things. so. I think it's just better to, you know, put some luggage in, but make sure you know exactly what you're paying for when you see that initial price, because it might not be as competitive as you may think it is. Um, another advice for packing, which I'm going to do a whole video on, is um, getting little packing packing cubes, which keeps all your things ironed, so you don't have to go to the trouble of trying to find an iron, which is just a pain, isn't it? I mean. I mean, and then bring your travel iron, just, why would you do that? So, yeah, it keeps your things really nice and ironed, and it also means everything is more compact, meaning you can fit more things in your suitcase, so you're getting a little bit more for your money um, if you're going to put that case in the hole in the first place. Ah, whew, this is really hard to do in one take. I'm, pi I'm pioneering through, I'm going through. So that leads me to my next point, which is hostels. Um, I personally have stayed in quite a lot of hostels, be it through school trips or my own travelling experiences and I think they're just the best way to travel, especially when you're younger. You meet other people um, who are doing the same things as you, that are like-minded and it's, sometimes it's nice to experience the culture a little bit more but just by going out and staying and meeting other people and um, personally the one we're staying in in Berlin, I keep saying personally and I'm pretty sure I don't need to, um, personally the one we're staying in Berlin has quite a big communal area where you can meet others and we're actually staying in a room that is shared with four other people so it's a six female dorm obviously this isn't to everyone's taste but it does bring down prices 
quite significantly. I think the price was about 20 euros a night and it came to about 100 pounds for five nights, if I remember correctly. And um, you get lockers in the room, so I mean, there is a bit of a risk element with it, but um, I think overall, if the hostel is good and it has a good reputation, which this one does, I will link it below if anyone wants to go to Berlin. Um, it's worth doing, and you know, for that price, it just makes sense. So, let's see. Um, my next point is to be close to a station or um, be close to everything on the main tourist attractions. Where we are going, it's going to be 20 minutes, or 20 to 40 minutes walk away from the main attractions, meaning that we won't have to spend loads and loads of money on getting around in Berlin. And because the, the museums cost things anyway, cost things, cost, I think I meant it cost money, cost money anyway. So if you can cut out that kind of transport element, um, get, getting buses to the station, getting on the train itself, it's gonna save you loads of money and you're not gonna be wasting the budget that you've got and you can do things that you actually want to do rather than spending it all on traveling. Okay, my next point is to bring food. You know, you don't want to die out there. <laughs> I'm joking, joking. That wasn't funny. Why did I say that? That wasn't funny. Um, bring food um, in your suitcase. A lot of the places um, you'll probably be visiting will be quite inflated in terms of pricing. When I went to Paris in December, everything was ridiculously expensive just because we were in a main tourist area which was very very close to the Eiffel Tower I think we, my dad had a beer, I had like an orange juice, my sister had an apple juice, my mum had a coffee and it came to something like 40 euros it was absolutely ridiculous and obviously we had to pay it so look up where the best places are to eat and if you can bring your own snacks I'd highly recommend it or find somewhere that has breakfast included, it's going to be basic but at least you've got something our Munich Hotel has breakfast included and it's about £100 for four nights so we've got about nine nights for £200 which is pretty good going and it just makes sense to bring a bit of food so um, this leads me to my next point it doesn't really lead me to it I was going to say anyway budgeting I think everyone thinks they want to keep the price really low down and they're going to budget and they're not going to spend loads of money I think you need to be realistic with your budget a lot of the times you end up spending more and you don't want to be maxing out your debit card and you don't want to be in a position that you haven't planned for. So if you make a little bit more generous budget and say to yourself you don't have to you know, use all of it, I think it just makes more sense and it means that you're not going to be stuck in a foreign country not knowing what you're doing in terms of your finances. So I think that's all my tips for today. I'm um, sorry this is all one take, but I'm um, just, video editing, editing software is a nightmare. So thank you guys for watching, I hope this has helped any of you guys who want to go travelling. I will link the hostels that we're staying in down below so that um, you can have an idea of what they're like, how close they are to things, especially for anyone who's interested in going to Berlin. I personally have never been to Germany before in my life, <laughs> so that should be interesting. And I'm really excited to explore it, and I'll be going on the 5th of July, I'm going to be vlogging the whole thing, which I'm really excited about. I'm also going to Iceland in 23 days, I'm going to be um, vlogging all of that. So if you want to see how that turns out, <laughs> hopefully well, then subscribe to my channel and come along my journey as I go travelling. I always do this when I say travelling. Yeah. Um, so yeah, without any further ado, I am going to go. So I see you in my next video. Bye!